What's up guys, Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com, back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out an add-on that's designed to conform shapes onto other shapes inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this add-on is called Conform Object. It's an add-on from Mark Kingsnorth that you can find in the Blender market. I will link to this in the notes down below, or you can check it out by going to TheCGEssentials.com slash Conform Object. And so basically what this does is it's designed to wrap objects on top of other objects in a non-destructive way. And so I'm really excited to kind of play around with this because there's so many possibilities that come with an add-on like this. So everything from adding detail, you could use this to conform shapes to other shapes and then use them as Boolean cutters. I mean, there's a lot of different things about this that I think are really exciting. Um, you can find the documentation for this add-on um, in the link on the Blender Market page as well. So there's a full documentation section for this add-on as well, giving you instructions, everything like that. And so the way it's gonna work is you're gonna install it just like you would any other add-on, right? So file or edit preferences, install, and you just wanna make sure that you install and enable mesh conform object right here. So just make sure that's enabled. And so basically what this is going to do is this is going to take an object and it's going to conform it along another object. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select all the objects that you want to conform first, and then you want to select the object that you're going to conform along like this. Well then if you right click, notice how this adds a little menu in here called conform object. And this is gonna give you a couple different options. We're really gonna focus on the first one for right now. So I click on conform object. Notice what it's doing is it's taking this cube and it's basically making it align with this sphere. So it's taking the bottom of it and it's kind of like shrinking it down to match the sphere right here. And so basically the way this works, if you read the documentation, is this basically creates a deformation grid object, um, which then gets wrapped along the surface of the other object, and then it uses that grid in order to align or deform your object to follow along with the grid. So it's basically automating the process of adding a whole bunch of different modifiers in here, which makes everything really easy to use. And so you may have noticed that right now, what this has done is this has basically taken the bottom of this object right here, and it's conformed it while the top basically stays about the same. And so there's an option in here for gradient effect that if you uncheck, notice how this box is then getting the deformation applied to the whole thing. The gradient effect is basically taking the effect from the front and it's basically blending the effect. So notice how Right here, if I adjust the end, then the blend of this object or the blend of the deformation is going further onto my cube. And so let's take a look at a more complex example because it'll show us a little bit more of how this is working. So let's say we wanted to take this object and deform it along our sphere like this. So it's gonna work the same way. So we're gonna select whatever objects we wanted to form, do a shift click and select the object that we wanted to form along. And then we're just gonna click on conform object or we're gonna right click click on conform object and go to conform object. And so notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's using that gradient effect again in order to um, basically place this along this surface. Notice how if you wanna see the grid, the deformation grid that it's using, you can just uncheck the box right here in order to see the grid that it's creating. But if we take a look at this and we set our end to something like one, Again, notice how the very top of this object stays flat while the bottom is being deformed along here. If you want the whole thing to be deformed, you can just uncheck the box for gradient effect. Well, notice what that's doing is this is conforming this whole thing in here. And notice how that's a little bit clunky just because there's not a ton of geometry in here, right? So if I was to tab in edit mode, for example, notice how there's no like, um, this isn't like split up or anything like that. And so let's say now that we wanted to look at this again. First off, notice if I do a shift D to duplicate these two objects, that conform is not carried along um, from this object to this object. So you're just gonna have to run that again. That's something to kind of be aware of. But let's say that we wanted to use this object in order to be like a Boolean cutter. Well, there's a tool in here that allows you to offset how far down into the surface this goes. So notice the offset right here. Um, bring our subdivisions down a little bit. But notice how if I use the offset, what that's gonna do is that's gonna offset this and notice how it's gonna go inside of the object. So basically it's gonna intersect 
with the object right here, right? Um, but what we don't want to do is we don't just want to add a Boolean modifier because it's going to get in this kind of like crazy loop of trying to conform the object and then use a Boolean and then try to conform it again. We don't necessarily want that. So what we can do instead is we just want to come in here and we just want to apply those modifiers, which you can do either over here or over here. So if you right click on this um, under conform object, notice how there's an option to undo. So you can remove those or you can click on the button for apply. And remember, if you uh, use the option for apply, basically what it's going to do is it's going to apply those modifiers and make them permanent. So if we were to do that, Notice how the modifiers go away in here. And now this object, like this is just the geometry of the object, right? So there's no modifiers in there anymore. So this is a destructive operation, but now what we could do is we could come into here to our sphere, add a Boolean modifier, and we can just select this object right here. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump over to my other object and under viewport display, I'm just gonna set this as bounds. So now, we're just showing the bounds of the object in here, but you can see how this object is acting as a Boolean and cutting the shape. So you can use this in order to create Boolean cutters really easily inside of Blender. So one other thing I wanted to take a look at, and really this is something that is a little bit of conjecture on my part. So one thing I noticed on the Blender Market page was this example right here, where he's kind of conforming these objects to go around a curved edge right here. And so I think, and I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think the actual orientation of the object is gonna affect the way that's just wrapped on this face. So. For example, let's say I had a little cube like this that I've kind of extruded out. And um, let's go ahead and let's tab into edit mode and let's subdivide it a couple times just so we have some detail in here. So maybe like four. But if we were to take this and we were to use conform object right here, notice how it's not really bending it around the curve. It's just kind of like dropping it in here. And I'm pretty sure that has to do with the direction that the Z axis of the object is facing. Um, you may have to play around with this a little bit. I'm not 100% sure how this works. And so we're gonna do the same thing with this one right here, but I wanna make sure that the origin is aligned with this edge so that it's actually gonna bend around the object. I think moving it down low um, also affects this. So basically what we want is we want this uh, to be pointing at whatever we want this to bend around. But now if I was to do the same thing, where I was to do a conform object right here, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's actually conforming it around this curve. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set our offset to zero. And so notice how we're still not getting a super great result, right? And part of the reason that we're not getting a super great result in here doesn't have anything to do with our geometry here, and it has a lot to do with our geometry here. And so what we want to do is notice how right now it's taking it, so it's just bending it around this corner, and it doesn't really know what to do with this geometry. So if we were to, however, go into this object right here, tab into object mode or edit mode, and then select this edge, so just like this, and bevel it, so if I do a control B to bevel this, notice how my result starts getting a lot better, right? And the reason why my result's getting a lot better is because now there's more geometry for this to bend along. So if I was to just do this, you know, like this, it doesn't look very good, but as I start adding that bevel detail in here, we start getting a better result. And so one thing I will note about this is if I was to rotate this object like this, Notice how I get a better result in here because of the orientation. And the reason I'm getting this really kind of bad result right now is because I didn't apply my scale to my cube before I did this. So probably what I would do is I would just undo my conform, apply rotation and scale, and then reconform the object. So I would just undo it and redo it. But notice how your result is going to change if you rotate this object. So notice if I rotate it along the X axis like this, um, the result that it's creating by doing all the shrink wrapping and everything over here is going to change based on um, the rotation of the object. So the rotation of objects when you're trying to go over like curves and corners and things is going to be really important. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Lots of fun possibilities with this add-on. If you're interested, we can do more with it in the future. But for now, I'd love to hear from you what you think about it in the comments down below. I will link to this add-on on this page. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.